This video is about measures of variability and it's the first of two videos on variability and this video covers the range and the interquartile range. So, so far we've talked about frequency distributions which represent um, sets of data and we've talked about measures of central tendency um, which characterize the central point of a set of data. So here's a normal distribution. We've looked at other uh, skewed distributions, but right now we're just going to talk about a normal distribution. And so from looking at a normal distribution, we know where the um, central tendency of that distribution is, which is in the center of the distribution. So all three measures of central tendency, the mean, the mode, and the median, are at the center of a normal distribution. So there's another characteristic of um, the distribution and of a set of data that's very important as well, and that is the um, variation or dispersion of the data. So for example, this is um, another, it's supposed to be a normal distribution, and um, this distribution may have exactly the same mean, mode, and median as this one, but it looks very different in shape. So what's different is that the um, observations are dispersed across a wider range of values. So this, um, this distribution, it looks more squished than this distribution, and that's because um, the variability is higher in this distribution than it is in this distribution. So here's an example of two different um, data sets. And these data sets have the same mean and the same median. So the, the central tendency of these two sets of data is exactly the same. However, if you look at the numbers that make up the sets of data, you see that they're very different. So sample one um, has a lot more values, different values than does sample two. So there are um, so the mean and the median are in some sense less representative in this sample than they are in this sample because here there are far fewer numbers and all of the observations are much closer to the the central tendency in this sample than they are in this sample. And this shows what the distributions um, might look like for each of these uh, samples. So you can see again, in each case, uh, the mean and the median are 5, which is the value at the center of the distribution. But in this one, the data, um, the spread is much wider around the, the central tendency in this one, meaning the variation is higher than it is in this one. So you can um, look at the distributions and based on their shape you can t get a sense of the variation in the sample. So now we're going to talk about uh, different measures of this variation. So here's a data set that we're going to use to talk about the different measures of variability. So this data set um, has a hundred values and um, there's scores on each of these values. So you can think of this as a possibly um, scores on a quiz. Okay, so then um, each score is uh, ranked, all the scores are ranked in order. Okay, so this is the first score, meaning the lowest, all the way to the hundredth, which is the highest score. So the first measure of variability that we're going to talk about is very simple. It's the range. So it's simply the um, distance between the first and the last score, which equals 85, which is the last score, minus 35, the first score, which equals 50. So the range is simply the, um, literally, the range of values over which uh, the data set um, ranges. So the next type of measure of variability is called the interquartile range. And um, the interquartile range refers to the middle 50% of the data. So uh, to calculate this, we want to calculate the different quartiles. So we have the, 20, the, the first quartile, which is the first 
percent of the data, the first quarter of the data. And so um, it's helpful here that we have the data ordered. And so the 25th percentile will be um, between, directly between the 25th and the 26th observation. So um, to get that, we simply take the um, 25th and the 26th observations, and then we, we calculate the middle point between those two observations. In this case, it's easy. Uh, because they're the same number, but you would just take 45 plus 45 divided by 2, 90 divided, which equals 90 divided by 2, which equals 45. So we're going to do that um, also for the um, 75th percentile. So again, we want to calculate the midpoint between the 75th and 76th observation because we want to get the number above which 25% of the data lie. So again, um, if the numbers were different, we would take 71 plus 71 um, and then divide by 2 to get the middle point between those numbers. Uh, we know that it's 71. So we have the 25th percentile, uh, which is 45, and the 75th percentile, which is 71, and so the interquartile range is the difference between those numbers, which is 71 minus 45 equals 26. And uh, often you'll see the interquartile range um, listed like this, where it's just two numbers, um, the 25th percentile and the 75th percentile. So <clears throat> We will, just for fun, let's calculate the um, 50th percentile because those numbers are actually different. And so remember that the 50th percentile is also the median. So to calculate that, we want to get the number between the 50th and 51st observation. Um, and so that's easy. So that is just 58 plus 59 divided by 2 which is 58.5. So the 50th percentile, or the median, is 58.5. So the goal of the measure of variability is to um, illustrate how similar the data overall are to the measure of central tendency. So um, this frequency distribution or histogram shows the score data that was um, that we were just looking at the 100 scores and this is a frequency distribution of um, of that data so the mean in this data set is 58.75 so there's the range I mean the mean and now we saw that um, the range is just the full expanse of the data so in this case, the range goes from 35 to 85. So that shows that um, the observations span a width of 50. And the interquartile range is 26, or um, it goes from 45 to about to 71. Okay, so those are two different measures of um, the variability of this set of data, but as you can see, um, there's a lot of information that is still not captured by those two measures of variation. And so um, one of the things that we might want to know is what is the deviation of each of the scores from the mean? So essentially that's what, what we're most interested in. How much do the scores in the data set vary from the mean? So that's what we talk about in the next video, Variability 2.